Greetings, Internet. I am Deco Jones, the world's smartest nerd. I welcome you to what is the first video on my new channel. In this first episode of a segment I aptly have named Ask the DJ, I answer your random, strange, and most desperately nagging questions about life and the vast world we live in. This will be a continuing segment, but more segments will be added throughout my time on the internet. I hope you enjoy. If all your life you've had a question, one that's just too strange to mention, want an answer, here's the way, just ask the DJ. First inquiry of random thought is provided by the bored musings of Swensy 100 who asks, Why are our movie theaters lame compared to all other places? Swensy 100 did you ever stop to think that maybe it's not just the movie theaters that are unsatisfactory compared to others, but your town as a whole? The answer to your problem is proportion. New breakthrough techniques in scientific research have substantiated proof that an individual place's coolness is limited by its surroundings. A lame theater can only mean that your town as a whole is lame, because a movie theater can only be as hip as the town that encloses it. I feel your pain, though, Swensy 100. I come from a town whose most popular attraction is the world's largest bottle of Tylenol. It just doesn't pull in the crowds like, say, a miniature golf course in Orlando. In fact, look at Orlando for a second. I mean, it has more amazing theme parks than... Insert simile here. I mean, you would have to type in yawn to your smartphone GPS just to even try to find something less than 7 out of 5 stars in Orlando. Whereas, if you look out your window, and this is your hometown, you'll be lucky if the cool barn doesn't have dry rot. A lot of it is based on maintenance, and the quality in which a structure is initially built and afterwards maintained is dependent on three things. Popularity, visitation, and traffic of tourism. Because if you live here, it wouldn't be economically wise to build the Sydney Opera House. I'm sure you'll be able to find a better town not far away, unless you live in Antarctica, because there's no civilization out there. And then you'll be able to find the grand movie theater to visit. Because, unfortunately, unless you decide to found a new city, it's out of your control. So, your DJ advice for the day is to not worry about it. Because, otherwise you'll end up with a big headache and you'll end up being one of the seven annual visitors to the world's largest bottle of Tylenol. And that's a visit not worth it. Segway! Our next question for the day comes from a friend of mine who asks, Why is Nowhere hiring for summer jobs? I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Nowhere Corporation, let alone how they could afford to be hiring over the summer. Nowhere else is. Why? Because our economy is in shambles and the value of the dollar is dropping faster than the stockholders are dropping off the roofs of their work buildings. What a lot of people don't know is the reason for our nation's economic plight. Well, Bush for one. But before that, it began as a bigger scheme, dating back centuries in the 40s, when in Roswell, New Mexico, a UFO crashed, arousing the interest of tens of people. It was covered up to be a rogue weather balloon. Lies. As it was 15 years later that Hanna-Barbera created the Jetsons to premiere on ABC, in which families traveled via flying cars, shaped similarly like UFOs. Coincidence? Possibly. That is, if you were unfamiliar with the truth that Hanna-Barbera was secretly a government agent. The show was commissioned to radiate subliminal messages to children so that when they reached adulthood, they could easily be converted into citizens of a new futuristic world. After studying the crash-landed machinery for over 30 years, our own technology was not able to apply it yet. The grown new generation, with the seeds of the new world already planted deep into their subconsciousnesses, were passed by. The brainwashing show was re-aired in the 80s to enrapture the next generation. With our new superior technology, the enhanced alien tech left over from the Roswell crash could now be applied to our lives, and their master plan can now be implemented. We are on the verge of a nationwide holocaust to rid the world of all manual labor, and replace them with nuclear-powered Automaton Zeta intelligence drones. In their sixth and final stage of development, these robots will soon take over the workforce. 
They currently run at $100 million a piece, but once enough employees are laid off, companies everywhere will be able to purchase these work droids, and after a few decades of not having to hand out paychecks, these heftily priced Nazi drones will pay for themselves and maximize profit for CEOs everywhere. Nazi drones can be programmed to handle any job. Teachers, doctors, by-the-book lawyers, ringmasters, even ticket takers at your small and incredibly lame movie theaters. As heartbreaking as it is to say, summer jobs are only the first to go. Within the next ten years, the only jobs available will be computer programming, positions of corporate management, and presidency of the United States, because the U.S. government will never consider their own creations to be official U.S. citizens. That, my friend, is the only logical explanation as to why you cannot find a summer job. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Ask the DJ. I'm your host, Deco Jones. If you have a strange or random question, something you've always wanted an answer to, leave it down there in the drainage system. I'll be down there waiting for them. Until next time, Internet, DJ is out. Deco Jones and his fellows do not represent, own, or endorse Talano, the Sydney Opera House, Hannah Barbara, the Jetsons, ABC, the government, or any of their affiliates or associates. He is a nerd who is never wrong and is not to be held accountable on the rare occasions when he actually is, and his fellows are not to be held responsible for any mishap resulting from following his advice.